I miss having a mother, despite the fact that I really didn't have one in the first place. That might not make sense. Oh, how were you born? Really? Really? That's where you're going to go? Look, when I say I, I don't feel like I ever had a mother, I don't feel like I had somebody who was a mother to me. I had a biological female human parent, but that's kind of really all there was to it. Sure, there's a couple of moments in my life where I felt like that person was being motherly, was being kind to me, not like for some sort of social merit of some kind or to make themselves feel better. But in reality, there may have, there were moments where she was genuinely, or at least it seemed like it, caring about me. But those are few and far between everything else. That love, that affection, and genuine sense of caring for somebody, those things don't feel like they ever really existed. I was required to do certain things, of course. And, you know, yeah, sure. A lot of those things uh, have stuck with me. And in a way, yeah, there, there have been good habits. But most of the habits are also bad, too. Here's a for instance when it comes to one of those good moments, I think. I was about eight years old. In fact, I might have been literally eight years old. I think it was actually my eighth, my eighth birthday. And I got to go to a local ice cream shop and I got to pick what I wanted. And yeah, I mean, you know, I was eight years old and or I was 10 or nine. It doesn't really matter. It was my birthday at around that age. And I ended up getting a banana split and I got to eat the whole thing all by myself. I didn't finish the banana split. However, because, you know, I was still a really small kid, and that's a lot of ice cream. That's a whole banana, plus syrups and nuts and all sorts of other stuff. You know, in fact, that's really the only positive experience that I can remember that seemed like I was not just the center of attention, because I don't want to make it seem like I need to be the center of attention in all this. But as if another human being actually cared for me. Because the rest of the time, it never felt that way. I was always anxious around my parents. I was always walking on eggshells. My dad was bipolar. And I can really only remember the negative stuff. In fact, to quote Maya Angelou, I've learned what people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And my mother never made me feel loved. She never made me feel valuable or special or worthwhile. In fact, sure, yeah, you might forget what they say or do, but often what they say or do is how they make you feel. You know, when your mother tells you on a regular basis that she regrets having you as a child, that she wishes she had had the abortion that she wanted and debated over, um, the fact that that your birth was, for all intents and purposes, an inconvenience and screwed her life up, that every time you acted up, it was time to go to either the military or it was time to go to the mental health facility that was in another town. I remember being told that I wasn't going to amount to anything, and I still feel that, even at the age of 37. I remember how I felt when I was in middle school, and I had one of the best report cards of my life at the time. Now, sure, I've made some better grades now, after years and years and years of being on my own and learning how to make my own mistakes. I had a C in one in class. Everything else was A's and B's. One C. It was history. And we ended up having effectively one of our many lectures for at least two hours, if not more. 
Because that's how it was. There was nothing that was good. It was always the bad. Hell, I remember mowing the lawn sometimes and having to re-mow the entire lawn because certain sections didn't look right. Or I had to re-clean the entire bathtub because there was still a tinge of dirt still left on it. Mind you, these are all things that happened when I was preteen teenager. Because when I became a teenager and older, things got worse. You know, I would... My dad was always the punisher for all intents and purposes. So if I screwed something up, I had to wait till he got home to get the living crap beat out of me. Got into a fight with him before he died. I was 16. We got into a fight. He threw me into the Christmas tree. It was the only time I ever stood up to him though. And then he died three weeks later. Never felt any love from him either, but he wasn't even my biological father either. My mother, again, she's the focus of all this. I never felt like she had my back in anything. Now, she told me there were times where she protected me from him, but pretty much when I was a kid, that was too young to remember any of it because I never remembered her being somebody to protect me from anybody, especially herself. In fact, I recall one day, I was probably about 14 or 15 years old, and she was whooping me with the belt for some reason. Again, I don't know why, but I remember what happened. I remember what she said, and thus I remember how she made me feel. At one point, she lost control of the belt, and on the one end with the belt buckle, it came flying at me, hit me in the face. Then she said it was my fault. It's all my fault, all of it. Her career, her potential military history, whatever she wanted to accomplish, it's all gone. It's all over because of me. She wanted to abort me. Told me regularly as a very young child these things. You know, the worst part about it all is that when I was younger, because of my last name, people made fun of it in a sense. It's, it, they would call me Bambi. And then they would say that they shot my mom and I would get pissed. I would, I would actually try to defend her and whatever honor may be involved with her. And yet, never got any of that. I was never defendable or defensible. One time, I was in third grade and I was supposed to go into a gifted program. And my third grade teacher pretty much tried to convince my mother otherwise and she was too much of a coward to be able to do anything about it she never did anything i didn't go into it so something that could have actually benefited most of my life she never stood up for me in that regard i can't remember a time where i was comforted either where i felt in some way physically or emotionally distraught and had this woman comfort me. There was no comfort in this household ever. And then if something ever happened where I felt mistreated by her, often I would get the lecture that, well, I had it worse than you're getting it. Well, it's like, <laughs> so, you know? Just because you got your leg cut off doesn't mean I want my foot cut off. You know, I, I don't care. Either way, it's going to cripple us. Don't cripple your fucking children. I was crippled as a child. Emotionally. Not so much physically. In a lot of ways, though, that weren't sort of directly physical. You know, when you, when you treat somebody so horribly, when you mentally and, and, and emotionally abuse that person, a child, in such a way where they can't function in day-to-day -day activities, it's emotionally and sometimes physically crippling. It's just a different kind of physical crippling. In fact, I remember... When I was a teenager, yet again, I was about 14, and I had ingrown toenail surgery done. Well, at one point, 
during this whole process, either before or after, it didn't matter. I went to a grocery store with her, and I think we may have been getting medication or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was. There may have been nothing to do with my ingrown toenail, and yet she brought it up to the cashier anyway, and then basically because the surgery was going to happen, and I guess because this was uh, financially devastating enough that she had to embarrass me in front of the stranger, she had me tell the teller why I was getting the ingrown toenail surgery. It's because I bit my toenails. Because I was a child who didn't have coping skills and didn't know basic hygienic maintenance of those digits. I never learned how to take care of myself. In fact, I got all the opposite of it. I still remember when I was a very young child, six, maybe seven, if, if not younger than that, I remember getting bathed and her using the wash rag on me and it hurting and me showcasing discomfort of this and her giving no fucks basically telling me to deal with it not not even like take it like a man or tough it out or anything but just deal with it because she didn't know how to care which is funny because then she decided later on in her life to go to school to learn how to be an occupational therapist and i'm like I don't understand. I said this out loud. I'm like, I don't understand how could you be how you could be a therapist ever. Cuz you're not the kind of person who could care like that. She was apparently she was obviously frustrated with my statement. Nevertheless, I never thought and I still don't think that she has the ability to produce any kind of therapy for anyone that's positive. And you know, going along those lines of not really teaching me how to care for myself. I never really was taught how to do my chores. I was never really taught how to cook for myself. In fact, when I tried to cook for myself, I was discouraged from doing it because I never did it right. There was never any time for me to learn. It was, you need to do these things if you don't do them, you will be punished. Your punishment, this is obviously unsaid, will definitely be overboard. It will be excessive. It will not make any sense. Like at one point, I don't even remember why it happened. I was about eight years old when the Nintendo came out, thereabouts. And I had one around that time. And it got taken away from me for something that I did. I don't recall. But I believe it was only supposed to be taken away from me for like maybe a week, two weeks, maybe a month tops. Which is still a long time for a kid like that, that age. I got it back over a year later. We had moved. I'm surprised it came with the move excessive punishments blame being thrown my way for things I didn't do never defending me really not that I'm aware of not treating me as if she cared about me at all there's a reason why I have no contact with this person anymore why I can't wait until I find out that she died so that I can finally start to heal. Maybe. I don't know. But I know there's no attempting to bridge the gap between the two of us. It's not going to happen. Somehow it happened with her and her mother. I don't know. But unless she's the one that reaches out first in a way that is transparent and apologetic. I will not be trying to reach out. I've tried multiple times. 
and failed every time. It has always gone sour. Every single time. I tried to make peace. I tried to broker whatever peace I could. But it didn't matter. Because for all intents and purposes, I had to submit to her. And I'm not going to do that. I was born into a position of submission and then beaten into further submission. I am not going to submit to a slave master, to someone who doesn't care about who I am, who never cared, who doesn't want to care. And if even there is a semblance of caring from that person, it never feels genuine. It never feels like that person is actually trying to care for me. It feels like they're trying to manipulate the situation to make themselves feel better about whatever. It's not fair to me. And I'm not going to put myself into a position like that. Ever. And you know what really, really sucks? Is that I see all the time people who have great relationships with their parents or there may be a conversation at some point talking about a mom or whatever and I can't I can't say anything positive I don't have that I don't have somebody who fucking cares about me in my life I will probably always try to find a surrogate mother just like I've always tried to find a surrogate father yeah, the chances are, whenever I get into a relationship with somebody, whether I want to or not, there will probably be some subconscious drive to push me into hoping that that person can be my mommy. Because I never fucking had one. And hopefully they have a really good relationship with their dad. So maybe that guy can be my dad or maybe they have a really good mom and then I can like adopt their parents into my life and have something, maybe. But you know what? I have no hope for that. None, because I can't even care about me. I suffered from depression so severe that it doesn't matter if I take medication or not. I'm always thinking to myself, world's probably better without me. I know I would be. I would be better without this world. I don't want to be here because there's nothing for me. And that sounds pretty damn depressing, doesn't it? Well, that's how I feel every day because I got nobody to comfort me. Nobody cares for me or about me in a way that I feel cared for. A friend who sends me a text, hey, how you doing? That's nothing. Sorry. You may be one of those people and you might do it with your own friends or something, but there's a lot more that people need on a regular basis. I'm alone and I'm lonely. And I don't try to isolate myself. It's not like a conscious decision of, you know, I don't want to go out today. Or, you know, I don't want to whatever. A lot of it is, hey, I'm broke. I'm trying to save up and get out of this crappy apartment. Or, hey, I'm sleeping. And sleeping feels good. Because it's better than everything else. It's better than thinking. It's better than feeling. It's the, it's the deadness that you can get while you're sleeping. Even if you're awake and just laying in bed, letting the TV play or whatever, browsing on your phone, it's better than coming to reality every day knowing that nobody has ever given a fuck about you in a way that you need 